Murphy, thank you for coming to this last in our uh, series of Montana history and nine more easy lessons. Uh, just pointing out to Dr. Fritz that we saved the best for last, so I know we're in for a treat this afternoon. Uh, how many people here are former students of Dr. Fritz's? All right. Ask him what kind of grade they got. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I was going to ask you if you could name names. <laughs> So, <laughs> so um, anyway, for 50 years, Harry Fritz packed classes at UM, um, where he was famous for his knowledge of American and Montana history and his storytelling flair that brought history to life. He's, uh, dozens of awards and scores of publications are testimony to that fact. After studying chemistry at Dartmouth, Fritz came to UM to study history and he holds a master's degree in history from UM and a PhD from Washington University in St. Louis. Uh, and I, I, I assume it was chemistry's loss, but it was definitely history's gain when, when he made that change. Um, his awards include the 2008 H.G. Merriam Award for Distinguished Contribution to Montana Literature, UM Professor of the Year in 1972 and 1999, and Montana Professor of the Year in 2004, and in addition uh, to his esteemed career as a Montana historian, Fritz served as state representative from 1985 to 1989 and a state senator from 1991 to 1995. So without further ado. Well, thank you, Kirby, and thank you all coming out on what I hope is not the first beautiful day in <laughs> Helena this season. We've had two in Missoula. And, uh, and uh, golf is tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, I gather this is the last in a series, so uh, I'm giving you next Wednesday off. <laughs> and uh, I, hope the weather, I hope the weather holds. I did teach Montana history as a big survey course at the university from 1981. Uh, I took over the course when K. Ross Tool died uh, that year. Uh, and I taught it until I retired, uh, formally retired in 19, when did I retire? I graduated in 19, uh, in 27, 2007. Um, but I continued to teach, not Montana history, I continued to teach uh, part-time for another 10 years. And in my 10th and last year as a faculty member, they made me teach Montana history again <laughs> because the guy who took it over for me uh, was uh, was uh, on leave, so my students probably thought that there was a, the material was a bit antiquated, um, but I did I did try to bring it up up to date. I uh, my topic of my talk today is uh, Montana the Triple Revolution in Montana. Uh, I tried this out for the first time in 1982 uh, when I gave a talk a dinner talk. Uh, to the Constitutional Convention delegates who were celebrating their 10th uh, anniversary after the Constitution of 72. I think it was the dual revolution there, but I added a revolution. Uh, and uh, the, the triple revolution encompasses uh, politics, economics, and, uh, and ideology. Uh, and uh, doesn't really have a firm, I, th I begin it in 1960, uh, and it doesn't have a firm ending date. Uh, politically, I think the revolution was over by 1975. Uh, economically, uh, we have to deal with uh, the closure, uh, uh, with the uh, shutting down of the smelters in, uh, in Anaconda and Great Falls in 1980, uh, and then the secession of copper mining altogether uh, in Butte two years uh, later uh, when uh, Arco pulled the plug on the pumps on Earth Day, Earth Day in April of 1980. And uh, we have the Berkeley Pit now as a great tourist attraction in the state of uh, uh, Montana. And ideologically, uh, which uh, I think in ter is in terms of environment, uh, still a pressing uh, issue as we'll, uh, as we'll see. So that's my, that's my notion of a triple revolution and I I think it's kind of stood the test of time. I think the period between 1960 uh, and let's say the mid-70s or maybe even the early 80s, couple decades at the most, 
uh, is the most uh, significant uh, brief historical epoch in, in recent uh, Montana history. I mean, we've had some crises uh, since then uh, over uh, energy. Uh, we're dealing with one now in terms of uh, climate change and uh, coal. It's not like we've been Dullesville, USA since 1975 or 1980. Uh, but looking back on that period, both politically, uh, economically, uh, and in terms of the environment, I still think it's the most important little sequence uh, of events in uh, most of our historical memory of, uh, of Montana. And I'll try, to, I'll try to prove that to you, I guess, uh, briefly uh, as we go. Politically, I think the revolution had five port, uh, parts. Uh, urbanization, reapportionment, the Constitution of 1972, uh, and then there were two uh, situational issues, uh, one-time only issues uh, that worked uh, to extend the political revolution. Uh, one of them had to do with the sales tax, and the other one had to do with, uh, with Watergate. Those are the five components of the political uh, revolution. And I begin with urbanization. Urbanization, the, the United States Census of 1960 revealed for the first time that Montana was an urban state. Weirdest urban state in the uh, nation. Doesn't bear much resemblance to New Jersey, another urban uh, state. Uh, but uh, the census revealed that for the first time, uh, more than half of all Montanans lived uh, in uh, what the Census Bureau defines as uh, cities. Uh, it was just barely over 50 uh, percent, and that percentage hasn't changed much uh, since then. We're still an urban state. Montana has been called a medium-sized American city with long streets, uh, but uh, um, and and demography doesn't have much to do with the political revolution. Well, it does actually. Uh, uh, demography remains a major concern in uh, Montana. We have 56 counties and more than half of the people live in just five of those counties. Uh, and in the next census, it could be that more than half of the people will live in just four of 56 uh, counties, and Helena is not one of those uh, uh, counties. Uh, unless you annex uh, Be uh, uh, Beaverhead, not Beaverhead, uh, Jefferson County and Broadwater County, uh, and then you'll get the Helena suburbs in and, you, and you'll, you might crack the top five after, uh, uh, after that. Uh, so we were, we were an urban state, and yet most urban residents were not fairly represented in the state uh, legislature. Uh, Montana was one of the most malapportioned states in the United States, uh, and the problem stemmed from the, 19, from the uh, 1889 Constitution, uh, which gave every county one senator uh, and at least one uh, representative. And it might have made sense in uh, 1889 when we had just 16 uh, counties, uh, but by the 1920s we had 56 counties, and about a third of those counties reached their maximum population in the first census uh, that that uh, took place when they were counties in 1920, and they've been declining uh, ever since. Montana has 30 uh, uh, counties, or one third of the of the uh, of the counties. About 17 of the counties uh, are actually losing a population, and have uh, for most of the decades since they were uh, created. I think this uh, demographic split, rural. Uh, urban is is as as extreme as it's ever been uh, in uh, Montana history. With all that uh, has to do about education and uh, and uh, first responders and um, 